Hi, thank you for choosing My Court Coach. My name is Jalen and I'm going to be your instructor as we talk about emergency hearings and how to set one up. First question is, what is an emergency? What do the courts actually consider to be an emergency? Because not what most people think to be an emergency that requires immediate attention is the same thing as what the courts see as requiring its immediate attention. So if you haven't watched the California rules of court videos or the local rules of court videos, this is a great time to brush up on that. California rules of court rule 5.151 is the request for temporary emergency orders application and required documents. Now, this rule is important because it actually tells you exactly what the court is that defines it as an emergency. So it says, the purpose is to address matters that cannot be heard on the court's regular hearing, uh, hearing calendar. In this type of proceeding, Notice the other party is shorter, and notice the other party can also be waived under exceptional circumstances, and we'll get to that in a second. But the purpose of the emergency order, or as the court defines it as ex parte, the court has to find that there is immediate danger or irreparable harm to a party or to the children involved in the matter, and you need the court to prevent that. You want to prevent immediate loss or damage to property that's subject to division between the parties in the case. Or you want the court to make procedural matters, such as setting a hearing on a matter that's sooner than that of the regular hearing, and that's called, called an order shortening time or you want the court to shorten or extend a time that's required for you to provide documents to the other party um, regarding the hearing that you have on calendar and documents supporting that. That's also another order shortening time. Uh, and then of course, if you want to continue or reschedule a hearing date or a trial date, those are the only circumstances in which the court will even consider your ex parte application. Now, it varies from judge to judge what the court or what the judge believes to be a, a, a legitimate emergency. And sometimes when the court doesn't see it to be a le legitimate emergency, they won't even hear you. They won't even entertain you coming into court and presenting in front of them if one of these requirements are not met. They'll just flat out deny it. So it's very important in order for you to not waste your time, the court's time, and also your money. It costs $60 every single time you file um, an emergency application. So in order for you to have a chance of having the court hearing you, you need to make sure that one of these requirements are in fact met and this is the reason why you're requesting um, the court to make immediate orders. So it goes over what required documents are needed in order for you to apply for an emergency and we'll get to that in a different video. It talks about the contents of the application and the declaration. And again, we'll get to that in a different video as well. But if you needed to go back and figure out, okay, whether my matter is an emergency or not, this is the rule. This is the rule that you have to look at to see whether, okay, what am, what am I asking? Is it really immediate danger, irreparable harm to a party or to my child? And I mean, the best way to answer this question is, do you need to call Child Welfare Services right now? Do you need to call 911? Did you take your child or yourself to the doctor? Now, is that the sort of emergency that you're having? Because if so, then 
you're a perfect candidate to file for an emergency hearing. But if you haven't really taken any of those steps and it doesn't rise to that level, then the court is probably not going to grant your emergency request. So it really depends on how you um, persuade the court as to what you think is an emergency and why urgent action is needed to take. Uh, place now versus you know three weeks from now or three months from now so the other thing that we want to address is how do we set up an emergency hearing now that we've established that yes I do have an emergency that I need this court to address it now I need the court to address it tomorrow for example well if you wanted the court to address it the following day and the following day is not a court holiday, so the court is open for business, then you must, you must follow the rules, the local rules of your county. And I just picked San Diego as one of the local rules to assist us in setting an emergency hearing. But it's really gonna be dependent on every county. Every county is gonna have a different method to set up these emergency hearings. You'll have to call the court, you have to call the other party. There are situations where you don't have to notify the other party of the emergency, because if you do, then there are, um, might be some consequences that might be taken you know, against you if the other party did know that you were going in for an emergency. And the perfect example of that is an abduction, like you, your, your, the other party is not willing to give the child to to you and you guys had an agreement that the child was gonna you know spend time with you and the other party now decided yeah I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the state and they've already threatened that and they've already not only threatened but actually taken steps to um, remove the child from the state and essentially it's the equivalent to an abduction um, it's not considered kidnapping but it would be considered a, an abduction um, and in which case you would not want to tell the court that you are going for an emergency to get an order for you to have your child not be removed from the county or, or to have the child returned back to you so in cir circumstances like that you should not notify the other party but it's going to be very case specific and every county has their own rules as to how you should set up an emergency um, the one for San Diego is rule 5.3.1 and it states how you should set up the emergency hearing um, so to summarize you need to call the court clerk or the ex party line every uh, county has their ex parte line um, that you would need to call and then you would need to tell them your case number you need to tell them why you're going for the emergency and whether there is an objection to that emergency and then after you notify them of that you also have to notify the other party um, again, if you can notify them, if you cannot notify them and you have a really good reason not to, such as an abduction, then you wouldn't notify the other party. And you have to do this notification before 10 a.m. So if you're going tomorrow for an emergency hearing, you have to do the notification at least by 10 a.m. the day before. And then you also have to provide them the documents that is supporting your request by 2 p.m. You gotta provide it to the other party by 2 p.m. And then you have to provide it to the court no later than 12 p.m. If you're 1201, I mean, depending on which courthouse you're in, they won't accept your paperwork. So you gotta make sure that you have all of your paperwork in a lot in, uh, completed and the $60 check is also provided with the ex parte unless you have a fee waiver and if you don't know what a fee waiver is we can get to that in a different video but for this emergency hearing you'd really have to follow what the county um, is guiding you as to how to set up an emergency hearing so this only applies to San Diego and um, the California rules of court just tells you exactly how 
or, or why you should set up an emergency emergency hearing and the information uh, in that emergency paperwork we'll get to that as well in a different video well we hope that you have found this helpful and thank you